I stand at my window for long stretches and I look outside. This makes me sound lonely. At the same time, it's a window. So I saw Prentice when he pulled into the driveway with a car trailer attached to his wagoneer. I knew he had been gone. I have his house key for emergencies. I waited a few minutes while he grabbed bags and boxes from the back seat and took them into his house through the kitchen door. Then he went inside and stayed inside, so I decided to go over. It was early in the morning. Prentice must have been driving all night. I wondered how many packs of cigarettes he smoked in the car, and I looked in through the open window. There's a pile of books on the front seat, one of them lying open. It doesn't run, he said as he came out of the house. I followed him back to take a look at the car on the trailer. It was antique, a Cadillac, bright blue with shiny chrome and a sparkly veneer that I wanted to lick, but I have no interest in cars. What will you do with it? I asked. I'll get it running. You can't fix cars. No, but I can pay someone else to. He smiled at me and slapped the hood. 16,000 miles. That's all she logged in 21 years. I'm sorry for your loss, I said, sounding like every other helpless sucker in the universe. But my face had burned for days after Prentice left because I didn't say it when I first got the chance. He came over to tell me he was headed south, that his mother had died, and then he asked me to take the mail from his mailbox and pile it up on his porch every few days. I didn't say a word to him. I just started to cry. He finally turned around and went home. And so I made a second effort and expressed my sympathy in proper terms. Prentice thanked me and removed his glasses. He wiped them on his white-collared shirt, which was crumpled and smudged, as if he had been wearing it for days. He made a gesture toward the bridge's yard. Their youngest daughter, Amelia, was riding circles in a small ring on her horse. She was posting. Prentice said, It still amazes me that people around here are allowed to keep horses. I am wearied by the sight of Amelia and her sister, two large-breasted girls and the horse they groom and feed and take to shows in a white trailer with the name Count painted across it in gold. My ex-wife still rides, he said. You know, it gets addictive. The friction. The friction gets addictive. While you were in Florida, I told him, Pippa saw some kind of wild animal going in and out from a hole under your porch. That's so, said Prentice. What was it? Did she get a good look? She thinks a possum. She saw it more than once, but it was always dark. Prentice watched Amelia and Count come around again in the tiny paddock. A possum, he said. They've got kind of a creepy grandeur, don't you think? I think they're ugly. Is that what you mean? They're exquisitely ugly. They are abject. Well... They do get big, I said. Pippa says this one is very big. Tell her I'd like to know more. Maybe she can come by and show me. Oh, no, I told him. She can't. This time I did not cry. I stared at Prentice head on and unabashed, like one of those animals without eyelids. There are some. They're reptiles. Pippa went away for a while. What? Since when? I looked at my watch as if checking the date. But my watch doesn't show the date, just the time and tiny peeling Roman numerals I can't see. I never know the time. Tom hates my watch for this reason, even though he gave it to me years ago. So where is she then? Prentice asked. We put her in a hospital in Boston. Prentice looked away to where Amelia was returning again on her stiff-backed circular journey. Count was defecating as he trotted. He did not even slow down. (laughs) ¶¶